Then Moses stretched out oh. his hand over the sea. And all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and left. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and that daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hand of Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Well, thank you so much for that reading, Geffen. And today we're in Exodus 14 and we're seeing the church's journey. And we're seeing how that God takes us, he frees us from the old life, the old life of sin and death. And we see here in Exodus 14 that Jesus is there right with us. His presence is there. He, he goes behind us, making sure we're safe and secure. And you need to know that even in your most severe trial, which could be death, that the Lord is with you. And what the Lord wants to do, he actually orchestrates this moment here in Exodus 14 where he makes Pharaoh chase us. And he wants us to show that he's mighty to save. And he also wants to show us that how much more powerful he is in the enemy. And he, he directs the church actually into a vulnerable place. And it's actually, that's scary for us. You remember how Pharaoh was chasing them out of Egypt and Pharaoh was bent on destroying them. Pharaoh's heart is hardened. And he basically we get to a place where there's only desert, army and sea. And, we, and it's scary for us because we think there's no way out. But there's also the Lord. There's desert there, there's an army there. And there's, there's an army chasing us, a sea before us. But the Lord is there protecting us. And Pharaoh may think that he's beaten us. The devil may think that he's beaten us. But the Lord has another plan. You see, the, the enemy never wants us to be free from the old life. And the enemy will use its best against the church. He'll use his best part of the army. The enemy will use the best part. He'll take his chariots, his, his armed armed. Um, resilience and armed attack against the church and when God puts us in a position where we feel vulnerable we can get scared and basically we, we freak out and think God why are you doing this it was better before I, I can't believe I'm in this situation this is so pressurized this is so difficult but it's important you are in that situation that you see that it's the Lord is fighting for you and that's what you see here that the Lord is fighting for us. And no matter how close the enemy is allowed to get in your life, the Lord will be right there with you, protecting you. And that's the difference. Yes, the enemy is allowed to be close. Yes, the Lord puts us in this vulnerable, pressurized situation where there's just desert, army and sea. And we think, how are we going to get out of it? Well, you're going to get out by the Lord and you're going to witness his mighty power. And I think it's really important for us that we do witness his mighty power. It's like God said, I, I actually need to show you my mighty power so that one, you'll fear me and two, you'll trust in me. And there comes a time when he says to Moses, Moses, stop crying out now and just move forward. And I think we need to hear that. There comes a time in our life where we do cry out, but the Lord says, now stop crying out and just follow my plan. 
follow my salvation plan. And we see it with Moses, isn't it? He raises up his staff over the water. He raises up the, it's a picture of the cross that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for your sins. And he raises it up and he says, now you begin to walk through the impossible. Where there was once death in your life, now God's saying there's going to be life. And we read here that Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on the right and the left. And it's a picture of the cross that even though sin and death is before us, it can't stop us now. That you, how do you pass from this old life to this new life? How does the church turn from this old way of living, a sinful way, now into this new fruit and loving and kind and generous way? It's done through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what that wind is. It's, it's dry. I like this picture here that the Lord shows us Moses the, the, this wind driving the sea back all through the night and you need that in your life that the Lord just begins to drive back that sea begins to drive back that sin as powerful as that sea is as powerful as that death is God said I will drive it back by my spirit yes there is death but now there's resurrection yes there was sin but now there is grace and even though sin and death could stop us before, now we, be, we witness it held up with a wall on the right and the left. And we're looking at almost our sin and death, which could, could totally consume us. And we see that it's no longer consuming us. Yes, it can consume others. And you'll see that it's going to consume Pharaoh and the Egyptians. But for us, we're walking through the impossible. And even there, the enemy still tries to follow you. If Pharaoh still tries to follow you, but what does God do? The Lord sees Pharaoh trying to follow you. He sees the devil still trying to follow you into the salvation plan. And what does the Lord do? He takes off the wheels of the enemy. He takes off the enemy's ability to travel, which is a, a, a great thing. And even the enemy will be forced to say the Lord is fighting for them. And you need to know that in your trial and your difficulty. As you, as you go into battle with sin and death as it were the biggest trials in life you need to say the lord is fighting for it for you and even the enemy as he begins to chase you and sees how frustration it is to catch you to see that his ability to travel and chase after you is taken away because of the cross he, even the enemy is going to say look the lord is fighting for this person the lord is fighting for them and what happens as the Egyptians, as the sorry, as the Israelites go through the Egyptians, um, the water is spread back over the Egyptians, and they all die. And the Bible says that happens at sunrise. As the sun is rising up, the enemy is destroyed. The power of the devil is broken. The Bible says in it, the reason the Son of Man come, the reason that Jesus came, Jesus Christ came into this world, was to destroy the works of the devil. And it says here that no one survived. None of the, de the devil's work survived. And isn't that going to be a glorious moment when you pass through death, that final trial, and God says, I pushed it back. I pushed and I rose you up and I destroyed all the works of the devil in your life. And it says the result, it was at the end, that the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him. And that will be the result. You'll fear him and say, wow. How awesome is our God? And you'll, not only will you fear him because you'll see how mighty his power, but you'll trust him. And say, Lord, I put my trust in you. For you are mighty to, to, to save. You've destroyed the works of the devil. And you've brought me out into safety. Thank you, Lord. God bless. Be blessed today. See how mighty the Lord is to save. He's with you in your trial. God bless.